Hello everybody! On the second week of October, the annual meetings of the IMF and World Bank start in Washington DC. Today I am joined by Nancy Alexander, the Director of Economic Governance and G20 at the Heinrich Böll Stiftung Washington DC, and she's going to explain to us what is happening during this week of meetings. So Nancy, welcome and thank you for taking the time. What happens at the annual meetings of the IMF and the World Bank? Well, this week at the annual meetings, the, the limousines will cram the streets and champagne will flow as the finance ministers of 189 countries come to Washington, D.C. to help steer the course of the IMF and the World Bank. And unlike the United Nations, where every country has one vote, these 109 members of the IMF and the World, 189 members of the IMF and the World Bank are grouped into 25 constituencies. So they have 25 representatives and they will steer the course of global governance. Wow. So the group of 20 is a group of the 20 most economically strong countries in the world. And they are also meeting during this time of the annual meetings. What's their role in the whole process? Well, that's a great question because the G20 is making some decisions for the much larger group of countries that belong to the IMF, the World Bank, and the UN. So the system is becoming somewhat less democratic. And in fact, this is a special year because the G20 has appointed an eminent persons group of individuals who will advise the G20 on what the future mandates of the IMF and the World Bank should be. So decisions are being made by fewer and fewer countries. And what about civil society? Do, do civil society organizations get to have a say in all of this? Well, business has a much bigger role in the direction of global governance than does civil society. And so we see a very unbalanced policy-making process, but civil society wants to create balance. It wants citizens' voices to complement the voices of business and the voices of government and be sure that the arc of governance bends towards equity, environmental sustainability, and democracy, including gender democracy. And they do so during the annual meetings in their side event at the Civil Society Forum. That's correct. The Civil Society Forum is a, it occurs in parallel to the official annual meetings. And we're somewhat uncomfortable with the fact that the Civil Society Forum is too segregated from the official meetings. So many of the business and government and media officials and representatives will not come to the Civil Society Forum from the official forum. And so one of the main benefits of civil society and being together in Washington, D.C. is to share information and strategize for future action. Wow. And how is the Heinrich Böll Foundation involved with this? The Heinrich Böll Foundation has a unique perch in watching for many years how the policy of the IMF and the World Bank has evolved. And it's going through, this policy is going through a very dramatic change that puts the private sector really at the pivot point of all global development. And civil society has some very uh, powerful questions to ask about whether the private sector and firms accountable to their shareholders can at the same time deliver public services in an in a effective and equitable and sustainable way. Okay, and finally, what does the Heinrich Böll Foundation want to achieve during this week? We want to build our partnerships with people from the Global South especially, but also the Global North. Be sure that campaigns are driven by powerful leaders in the Global South because the IMF and the World Bank primarily run their operations in the Global South. And so we want to be accountable as civil society to those affected communities and countries 
countries affected by the policies and operations of these big institutions. Thank you. Thank you for taking time to explain to me and the audience what's happening at the IMF and World Bank's annual meetings and good luck for the upcoming days. Thank you. <laughs>